So, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are. Welcome to part five of the chair. It seemed like a long project. Um, it'll be great to get this out of the way. But we've only spent five hours on it. So actually, not that big a thing. And the enjoyment to get out of this chair, absolutely stunning when it's done. All right. And like I said to you, the neighbours are all going to want one. The amount of comments we've had from the staff in here that go, where's the chair going? Oh, my God. How many have we going to make? So, all right. So, folding chair. Let's move this one. Get him out of the way a minute. Let's go to the bench. Last week, we did quite a lot of work. And it's starting to look like something now. It's it's quite nice to get to that stage. Now we've got something very dimensional. Something that's starting to look as a promising project. So we've got all the seats that's down now. Last week we, we had to bounce around a little bit. So I kind of said we're going to finish things off a little bit in between. So on the top, we've got our seat. We've got the back bit. We can take that out. I think you can remember. Let's try and have a look. I think Craig's got there. Fantastic. So we finished cutting our curve. Last week we cut, I think, three of them. We finished cutting the other three on the band saw. So I've chamfered all the edges. Get that lovely shape. Other end. Get like that barrel shape in from here. That nice hollow. Looks really nice. So the two components we know will drop in, slot together nicely. They should slide down. We've got those stop blocks we put on last week. So just quick recap. This week, not loads and loads to go. So first thing we need, a bit of bench space. So we're going to put that out of the way for a second. First thing we want, front legs. Doing a little bit of prep on these. Now, we've got a template. If we have a look down on there, Craig, number three, we've got our template. We've cut these out, and we know there's template pack. We've got bolt holes in here. There's one up here. This one I've highlighted in different color green because depending on the size of the chair will determine which hole you want. We want the short legs, so we've got the green bit. So you get our template. I've also done with our bit of wood, already actually cut them out. They're done as a pair. As we started off and we set about doing things, if you can actually machine these up as two components, it makes it easier. So to do these, I've drilled the holes, three eight diameter drill bit. I've put wooden dowels in just to secure them. So whilst I actually work on this, everything's held nicely. So what we've got to finish doing is shaping them. So we've got rough saw and edge down round. I've got to get the curb bit across the top. Back edge is nice and straight. That was my reference point of when I put the two together. So not too much work to do to these. First thing we're going to look at ground direction, which way it runs. So we've got a curb, want to come down, keep a third. I one pretty much the same, which is good. Again, we can use a mixture of hand tools. You could possibly have a big disc sander. All sorts of things for this. Let's have a look and see what I've got on the walls. Let's find our spoke shade, flat one. Hopefully, light cut. Going to see, just gauging where we're cutting. So by moving it about, I'm testing either side of it. Check I've got things parallel on the blade. Fine adjusters on these. Really nice to tweak things forward. I can level things off. So I'm going to come down. Now, other thing I'm doing, angling. Not being dead square to the workpiece. I angle across. That helps maintain the cut, give us a better finish, more like a skew cut in reality. Makes it easier to control. Getting shavings out of both bits. I've got a little hollow on the end here, I can feel. Working with the grain direction so the fibres are getting longer down the length. So what I'm really chasing, which you can't see on the camera, I'm going to colour it in so hopefully it will show. The little bandsaw cut just on there. So you can see that black dot. It will stay there with this cut. A bit smaller. So I've got to get rid of it. I'm trying to get the curb to flow. If I work on just a little bit on the end, we're going to change the contour. So by actually coming back almost right to the top of that curve, pulling through that shape all in one go, the contour will, will flow nicely. Feels good. Can't beat this as a finish. Off a cutting tool, nice clean finish, no sanding. Fantastic. First bit done. Going to turn that round. Got to come the other way. So the grain direction, the fibres now. Let's see if I can give you an idea of where they are. Just go go out to number three. But down on here, they're getting longer coming out. So I've got to take that direction. If I actually come from the corner and try and come all the way, we're going to break the fibres here a bit. 
won't get a nice clean finish. So I'm looking at that grain all down that edge. Again, just hitting the top of the band, so cut. Starting to get that back. Fingertips again, what's happening? A little bit right in the top, got a little hollow. The band saw cut there, got to get that. Again, that skew angle helps add more support, especially right on this tip. More bearing surface. So gently feed along. Again, fingertips, what's going on? Checking how things blend together. Down the side. I know it's only a garden shed. Wouldn't it be nice to... Get it looking really good. Got a little bit on the right hand board, just to blend in. Fantastic. Tiny bit there. I wish we could get the the feel of this over to you on a camera. Silky smooth. Can't beat that. Okay, now, fun, tricky bit. Go get back down to camera two, just confused. Let's move those back. Got this curve now to do around here. Some of it we could do spoke shape. We could do block plane coming up. Yeah, we could do spoke shape coming around. But as you've kind of said, we've used a number of different tools. So let's have a quick look. What have we got? We've got that tight curve. So coming up around, pull it around this way. Real tight edge. So I'm just going to come back in the vise. Now we can go spoke shape, we can go flat one, we can come round. But I know with doing the teaching and stuff over the years, people struggle with this. They, they, they rock it too much. Uh, other things started playing with those Japanese carvers fouls. I go with the grain direction, so lengthwise. We're trying to get over more than one thing that you could use to do. This is the job. Blending in to that straight edge coming down. And again, whilst having these as two components fixed together makes it so much easier to clean them up. That. Clean them up together. Again, fingertips. Going to blend it right into that flat, that curve flows nicely. Turn it round. Going to come that long bit now. Again, we could go block plane, spoke shape. We've got this now though. So Japanese curve is fail. This is all end grain. Nice clean band, so I'll cut to get rid of there. Not too much effort, that one, that's good. And turn it round. Just put that little bit where the grain direction is getting longer. I'm being a bit lazy, I could have moved it round the vice. But I can gently pull that towards me. There might be occasions where you're limited on access to use something like this, so it can be good to have a play with that. Nice shape there. Bottom edge going to sit on the floor so i'm not going to worry about that now i'm just going to go back down to that camera over here on the edge of the outer table that's not bad finish straight off the tool that won't need any sanding clean all the way through that's end grain so those are down up to there we now need to separate them we put them together with two bolts so two bits of dowel sorry let's phrase it that way We've got a three eight hole so I've got a bolt. A hammer. A bit more space just to get it. There it is. One. So I'm going to block up just a little bit higher. Two. Such an easy way of fixing something together. Two dowels. 
use those holes or something. If you if you bolt them together and you've got the nuts and bolts in the way, you can't hold it in the vice, all those sort of things. So a couple of short lengths of dial, match the size of the hole you drill, tap them together, they tap in and out. So much easier, especially if you've got two. If you've got some of the screw configuration bits, and this is going back through some of the other bits that we've done, as in the components, you can screw them together. Again, use those screw holes, those fixing holes that assemble the actual chair. Use those holes, give you support to actually work both bits. Same time, makes it so much quicker. So we put them back in our little box. On legs, let's move a few things. So we want those out of the way. We played with those last week. We'll go over those in a second. Next year on our legs, we want to route them. So we're going to go over to the router table. We've got our shape. We're going to just do chamfer all the way around the edge just to take that sharp corner off. Now, the router table we set up last week, exactly the same setup. We've got our chamfer cutter. We're going to have our cover. Now, I just need to check where I can get into with the cutter. I'm going to bring the fence back just a little bit. Now, we've got a bearing guided chamfer cutter in here. Let's just bring it back. We can have a bit of a look. Hopefully, you can see that. So we've got our bearing on the top, chamfer comes down, bring it forward. I've got that curved bit on the top, need to make sure I can get into there, but actually still run off the fence, come round, get enough support. A little bit far forward, I'm going to bring it there a bit more. I'm going to check the cutter will rotate. If we haven't moved anything fence-wise to stop it. Check the back on our bearing there. That's good. Bring that cover in. Do you think we've got a little bit of shape and curve on this? We can't use the feather board. So, what's up on here with being spring loaded? It would be lovely to use if it was straight. So, like the back slats we did. But this has got a little bit of shape, so we can't use that. Next thing, plug them in. That's in there. Back to their extractor. We know we've got their right goggles, earmuffs. Start with here a bit, so I can bridge off the tank, come over, work on that curved section. So I'm using the tank for the bridging point in reality. One side, it's going to be both sides of these. Up round, so we've got our end grain around the curve, pull it back, contact with the bearing. All the way down. Other side. All the way down the straight edge. Get into the curve, so I pull it around. Still resting on the outfeed side of the fence now. Makes life easier to get in down that edge. So have a quick look. Fingertips up good. One. Go to the other. Start long curve. So on. Feed down through. Round. So I'll pivot it around this bit so we're back on the in piece fence here just to give us enough support so we're nice and easily. Other side, so straight it first. working on our curve that will sit between the outfit space and the bearing and through reposition down that long curve edge fingertips check we're equal but a little bit I can see just there I want to get okay Let's move those bits out of the way so the goggles, the earmuffs are off. So all we've done now, chamfer edge, down round, into there, back on here. I'm not going to do the bottom, sits on the floor, so it'd be a shame to toughen that. This is really just about softening the edge, nothing more than that. So we've got the two, they're done. They're ready and ready, actually, apart from the sand, go on to the chair. Next bit, just going to bring two arms back in that we had set on here so last week we cut these out we shaped one we glued the blocks on the back which is up on here just let me turn that around so we can see that that's that block with 
create hole in the middle. I also said last week, don't go throwing anything away timber-wise until we finish the chair. So this bit here, that was the bit we cut out. So we need this because we've now got to make the brackets that support the arm. There's two templates. There's a small rectangular type one with rounded corners. We need four of those. And then there's this. We need two of these. So the reason I said about keeping this, then come out there. Now I'm just going to grab the pencil. Important bit with these, the grain direction. Very weird, running diagonally. Gives it strength. So parallel across here, all the way down through. So actually when I put these on, got to make sure I can line my grain up. I might have to turn the template over. That's okay. I can do that. I could turn the board over from your point of view if it makes it better for you to see. Look, put that on there. I can get my grain direction running where we want. Now in here, they're a little bit tricky to cut out. So I'm going to start really just doing that right angle for a second. I can draw all of it on. I've got a shape. But we're going to work on this bit first. Get that bit, then I can cut the curve out. That gives us something to work on, hold with all those other little bits. Goggles. Got to go over to the band saw. Let's move the fence. We're going to want that later. Going to do our curves. Now I'm going to cut, and I'm just going to mark out the other one as well. Just really the fact we're going to go to the band saw and cut these out. Might as well do them both. So my main thing with cutting these out to start with is getting that right angle corner we've set up. Not too worried about the curve because these I've then got to get dead square at a right angle. Tricky to cut on something like a chop saw or a mitre saw. Quite small, so tricky to cut on a table saw to try and hold and support properly. So in here, I'm going to cut them on the band saw. So first point I'm going to do, and we're going to dance about a little bit. I've got myself in line with the band saw. Gonna push down for there. Fingers out the way. Left hand fingertips in behind. So I'm just moving hands a bit. Left hand again behind the blade. Right hand supporting, pushing through. I'm nicely in line with the blade, so I can see what's going on. All these at the moment, that's all I'm going to cut for a second. We're going to come back and do a little bit more. This seems a bit a little bit long-winded. We want a nice, crisp, right-angle corner here. Whilst I've actually got material that I can hold in the vise nicely, I'm going to use it. So... All I want to do to stir it with, a little block plane. Oh, let's open the mouth up a little bit. Bring the blade forward. Let's check our cut. A little bit. So a little bit hollow on my bit of wood. That's better. This is actually cutting down for end grain at the moment, so we're getting a shaving. Just a little bit heavy for what I want. Again, skewing the blade slightly help give us better finish. One. I'm monitoring the square corner and producing check it's looking square not diagonal so things should be quite square as a planker same on the other one so low angle block plane really suitable for this so it's got lower angle too steep will slice through those end grain fibers nice and cleanly so we've got a clean finish on there 
So we've used that extra length that we've got to help support it in the voice. We can now go back out to the bandsaw, go trim those off. So our goggles are back on. Set up. Good straight. Hands nicely out the way, nice straight cut for these. One. Let me feed along. So, just setting up on over on the bench now. So we've got shooting board in the vice. I wonder. Maybe lazy. Yeah, that's not bad. So we can use block plane for this if you want. We could go bigger plane. We're going to use the bigger plane in a minute. I've got little wedge right in the corner there. I can see it. A bit too much cut for that. Now adjust things back up. Tighten up the locking wheel. A little bit more will be good. So this is about just really getting back to a nice square corner. You can't cut accurately with a hand saw. You maybe got a hand saw, you want to straighten things out. Well, left a little bit on that edge. So let's just lose that top corner. That's it. Getting back to it, but I'm going to go with something a little bit more weight. Got a bit more to get on this one. Okay, so we get our two corner bits. I am to work a little bit. Do we get our right angles? A nice yum there. I'm going to go back to the bandsaw. So we've got to cut out our shape. Now I'm just going to do just for this. All right, so we're going to cut out our curve shape down through here. So we've we've set up and got a nice square corner now. We've used maximum support we can whilst we're sort of in the vice or on the bench. That's one here. We're on. Just going to swap a few things. Okay. Nice in there. I can pull around our shape. Go here. So this has got three eight blade and same blade we used for the tight curve last week. Got good support either side to get my fingers in. The left hand behind the blade. I can feel it drag a bit there. So I've come out. Just going to use the scrap block. Act as a support finger. Too tight to pull round in one easy go. One done. Other one. Small problem bit on the top here. Let's have a look. This is going to jump off. That's gone. That's good. Now you've got to watch those little bits. That little bit came off. You get like a, a shard if you like. It's dropped down through the table. So we need to check in a minute where it's gone. Don't want that resting in between that and the bearing or the guide system. Left hand's doing a lot of work, supporting him behind. Nice and slowly around here. Here we go, we probably take them. Not too quick. We come out there. Got a tiny bit, I can just see right in the corner. Let's see if we can get it. So again, we're using something as a push stick. The fingers out the way. A little bit of support. So we've got, hopefully, our two little shapes. 
And what he said about things you've got to watch, little bits that drop down off the edge, can drop down through the table, check where they go with your bearings or anything, because if it gets wedged on the guide system, it can really affect how your blade will run. So I know we had a bit that drop off, so it's a good highlight for you. Right, we're going to want shooting board again in a second, so we're going to move them up to there. Stretch a little bit. Oh. We've got to clean up this curve now. Some of you might have something like a bobbin sander. I'm going to get a Japanese file. I can work different directions. You've got to remember which way the grain is running with these. So we've got longer fibers through the middle. So I've got to come down to the center. We could go spoke shape. Through the tops, I can bring it round. Which way do I need to go? Got to come over the top. Well, I'd like to turn myself round in the vice, but it means you'll block what you're going to see. That's better. Got to get up off the handle is where my problem is. One side. Up into there. line I can just see out on there beautiful thing with these work either direction so we've got our curve do the other one we could go with spoke shape it's quite a tight curve to get into that hollow all the way down in check my grain a little bit Brain fibers are getting longer down through there. So I've turned it around, I can pull it towards me. Clean finish there. Great, our hollow. Like I said, some of you might have a little bobbin sander machine. Got your disc sanders, you could use those. hollow so we're going to change to something with a little bit of a curved section what have we got fine one Go extra fine then on a flat get into there a bit better Okay, last thing I go grab. Got a bit there. Gonna go out to here. A little bit of a braid up on those. Just to clean in the hollow. Where should we go with something narrow? So we've done the hard shape with the Japanese files. Just smooth those contours together nicely. Take the arrows off the corner. So smooth it in. Again, and work the shape. R2. Quick move about with things, get back out the way, which we need the bench space in there. So I'll put those out.
Niks in beneden. Got the hose. Where are we? Got that. Got this little square component. I've done some already. Done two. Really for the fact of time. We're going to show you exactly how we did the two. So this is one of the short bits off the end of the bit of pine. Again, I said don't throw stuff away. It's big enough to give me a couple of brackets. So from there, I want to cut it to width. I better explain what else I've done to it. So we have one face edge. Then on here. This one, rough sawn still. So we've got something as a, a straight edge, which we did initially when we machined everything up. Template. Where do we want to be? Width. Just put it between. I can adjust things. Get into there. That's good. Not quite touching it. I want to be able to clean it up with the plane. Again, we can check our guides. They're pretty good. Just checking. We've got much gunk on there. Little bit of pine resin. So all we're going to do with this to start with, just rip this down and get it parallel. So bend saw cut, finger tipping on the side. Left turn, I bridge off and over the front. Fingers, down behind. We turn also go down to that one. So the push stick can stay still, but it's pushing diagonal pressure in. Left turn, hooked over the fence. Thumb is giving me the drive forward. And you're the end. Slow the pace down. There we go. Switch it off. So we got our bit. We don't need the little bit. Quick look to see which way the grain's going when we print the voice. Because all we want to do on here, clean up that edge. Good. So shooting board back in place. Just want to make sure both the ends are nice and square. Got enough open. Okay. One in that looks square anyway. Not a lot coming up there. See if we get anything this side. That cutting is nicer than I'd like. That's part of the material. This is all end grain, so it's pine, quite dusty, difficult to get a shaving. Love to get a shaving. But we've got a nice clean finish. Actually square, we can get our square up off the wall. Quick look. On there. On the light, that's good. Shooting board, let's have a think. We're going to want them in a second, so I'm going to leave them in the voice. We can nail cut these off to length. What I'm going to do the other way, so I'm going to get Craig back over to the band, so... There, so I can use the template again. Why are you just setting up our lamp? Tighten the fence down, let's see what it does. That's good. Not quite touching the bait, not making it pose, not trying to make it move. We're close, half a mil away. A little bit. Then we can cut these off. Let's get rid of that rubbish out of the way. And if you've got any questions so far, I know we're doing. Yeah, you've got a question, you can't then. It's a good time to. Oh, is it was actually a question by Roderick. Hello, everybody. Sorry. Um, a question, question by Frederick. Sorry. Um, he's just asking if we're going to be um, looking at starting courses anytime soon. Um, at the moment, we have no dates um, when we're going to be starting courses. So I know there's been a lot of questions about that. But at the moment, no. Sorry, no news at the moment. No, you, you kind of answered. All right. That's fantastic. Good. All right. So at the moment, no, guys, we, you know, as I just said. So. Go cut this off. Go trim them so glass is back on. Goggles are over there. So all we've done is set this up. Now, having squared the back edge, where we are, we know it's nice and square. We've got something as a reference point. So back in onto there. Instead of trying to cut to a pencil line, we 
in here, she used the accuracy of the bandsaw. So we go from there, going to turn it round. The other plain edge, the bandsaw cut we just have. Again, left hand tucked over the fence, so working and holding things parallel. Push it through. Fed stop. Come round a little bit. So we now have those two ends just to clean up. Very light cut, hopefully. Clean up our shooting board area, get rid of that dust. So that's the one we've just done. That's the one that's split. It's like bandsaw cut. But turning it over, I'm limiting the break out in the back corner. Bit heavy for this one, so that's come back a bit. So we can do our adjustment. Low angle plane will cut this a little bit easier. Also find it easier to hold up on the top. Feels good. Back to our template. I think, Craig, I'm just going to come down because I think you'll get a slightly better angle from down off here. So we've got these little corner bits to draw off. The other thing I've got to mark in a minute will be a couple of drill holes, but we can, we can do that easier enough in a sec. The reason I put the arrow on that one, just so I know which was the first point or flat edge, which is where my thumbs are on the back. We can do our curve. So we can mark those up. Now I'm thinking of where we are, what we've got next little bit. So I'm going to move shooting board. We're not going to need that. And go back over to the bandsaw just to cut those tiny corners off. We're going to move our fence right over. I might keep that block. Let's put that one down there. Give yourself some room. So I'm trying to make and push things out of the way. So that bit we cut out the middle, I can use just as a support. So my left thumb, think about where it's going. The kind of thing slips. Heading that way. This one, same thing. Slowly come up round. One dump. Put them out the way, put them back on. We we'll lose that bit. We'll lose these little corner bits. Have a bit like this. To get Flip off the blade, bounce off the table and go to different places. Nice and slowly. Right, I'll cut. So we should have our little cut corners. Slightly radiused. You have a couple of options on what you could clean those up with. Depends on what you want to do. Japanese rough again. We'll blend in nicely. Let's do one of each. Now I can push up the grain. Nice clean finish. Flip it over. Push down through. Blend them in. Fingertips, see what's going on there. I can put that one down there in a second. You might want to have a look. I'm hoping that will show. This one I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna sand. So you can go either way with this. You could sand them, spout shade them. Japanese curve as well, though, will give me, I think, different finish.
brazier pipe is easy, isn't it? So gently put our shape round. Small bit of pine inside this, just back to a small sanding block. We don't need anything too big. Work our shape. I don't know. We put them together. I don't know if you really see it on the camera. This is the, oh, the curvis fowl. It's actually a bit shinier. It's like a cut tool. The sanded one won't look as shiny. It puts a dull surface. So there are differences between what you can use. And um, kind of what I'm kind of trying to show, if you like. There are more than one way of doing one for that little bit where you can get to. So easy. Right then. Got two of those. Two of these. These ones I did earlier. I've got a few things marked out. I've drilled the 3 8 pole. We need two of those with 3 8 pole. Important bit now, though, we need to make sure that you make a pair that we need a left hand and a right hand. All right? So, what you don't want is two the same. And you'll see where we're heading with that really quickly. Call this drill just to draw the holes. Mark these holes out. These are the screw holes that will be into the brackets. So we're going to have one there. One on there. So these are four mil drill. Just really the fact that the screw then will pull through nicely. Get rid of the fluff. Don't like that there. We can countersink the backs in a second. Go back to laying them out in a pair. So by a pair, you've got to have a hole. I'm going to put them over for this one. This will be the opposite way round. All right. Hoping you can see that that's out there. The other one's this side. They're going to go up on there. I've got to drill two holes in those. That's the other two. And these things, if you remember, are a little... Eh, they've got to go in there. So what we don't want is two that are the same set out. They need to be opposite on where the holes are for how they got in the chair. Okay, just looking at my shapes. A little bit long where we overhang on the front here, so... Which way's the grain go on that one, Jace? Bring them down a bit. Adjustment time. Got to go there. On there. Right. Just don't have to get these together then. Going to want our block in there. The one with the hole, I'm going to stand up right. Have that over. So we've got a scrap piece of whatever you like in behind. I've got a piece of melamine board that we had lying about. Just bring it up so I can see my big drill hole in there. Top board, got to go there. Now I don't want to hit the dowel hole. Right there. Going to make my measurement, turn them over. Thickness, it's good. We want our board, it's in the vice now. Just something to drill on. Small drill. There. Glue. So smaller drill, two and a half mil, 40, 50, yeah, down the bottom. Screw those together. Just my torques in. I want to pull this one in a bit. On the other side, I'm not going to be as lazy. Going to go. Counter ball. 
easier to do. Less damage. Pilot drill to stop us splitting the fibres. To there. Now, the reason for using the bit of board in behind gives us something to sit against so we get a nice flashback, nice clean corner. Got to line this up now. On my bench, we have our centre block we used back in session one of this, I think. And I've got my mark there. I can see my drill hole, so I'm just going to put a line, my line there. Just really plotting this out where I want to get it round to, give myself a centre point, just as a guide. So I've got one there. We need to put our bracket, which is there, in the right way. One there, one there. I've already got my drill hole in this one. Now you could glue this. I'm going to hold it just there for a sec. 35 mil drill. Don't need anything quite as long. What I do need to do, counter sink that hole. Want to pull that screen flash. Bump. Turn around. Check things look parallel. That way around, that's good. Now this one I could have, let's just drop them down. It's going to make it easier for me. Move a few things on my template. Where's my button? That side, so I can flip it over. One, two. Again, using that template to show me where the drill holes are nice and accurately. We don't want that long. So I put two long screws down the back. Then the ones in to that bracket only need to be like 35 mil. Already done our pilot hole. We'll pull those in. Bear with me because I want to just do a little bit of a tidy for a minute. Need to create a little bit of space. Oof. Sorry, Carwin. Right, go That's for right. it. Now, there's just a quick question from Maria. Um, she's just missed a couple of bits there. Did you put um, holes in the top? So when you join these two together, um, did you put a pilot hole in first? So I drilled two pilot holes, which are marked on here. I haven't ever drilled them out. So in reality, what I marked up there with a the pencil, I made sure I'm going to fish this one out of the vice. My major thing I've got to miss, Craig, can we go down to two? This hole is the bolt hole, the important bit. So I've taken my pencil and gone. I don't want to miss, want to miss that. So my screw is there and there. Across the top, I've taken the thickness or halfway, draw a line. So I'm quite quick and easy at marking that out and making sure, and I know the most important bit on this is missing this. These then, I don't want this screw lining up here either. So our brackets are fixed. There, there. Got a screw to put in here, one down there. So get four for there. So yes, you you know you're going to screw down through those. And Maria, those two are the longest screws. I use sixty mil there, so I've got a real good grip down into here. I don't want sixties coming in from the back into the the shape, or we're going to come out the front. Pilot right? hole and pilot drill them. Yeah, so much better to pilot drill them. You don't split the fibres. I know the screws these days are designed to drill a hole, but we've all done that thing, haven't we? You put a screw in and you split the wood fibres that you're trying to hold. Nothing more. So annoying. Right, we've got one screw to put in there. I want a 35. That one there. Every bracket I'm not going to make for you. So a little boss there. I want that one in there. 
screw in here. So the other bracket I'd make up exactly the same apart from... Sorry, Craig, we're going back down to here. I've got the hole out here, bolt hole, the other one, with the opposite way round. So you make these as a, an opposite pair, if you like. Don't make them the same. Because the chair, believe it or not, doesn't quite go together the same if you make them to right hand or to left hand. I'm just going to create some room. Because we said we can make the other bracket get later. Now I need to get things back up onto the bench. It's not putting it all together. It's on the base. Oh. Gonna want an arm. Want my bracket now. I'm gonna do I'm gonna be nosy. Look, that's good look. Have to be, wouldn't it? So. All right. So we're going to we're going to do the right, the left hand side as we look at the front of the chair, because that's the bracket we've made. Oh. Just thought I'd have a look. Look, doesn't matter too much. Bolts. We've said about these a little bit as we've gone on. These are stainless steel. Those you want to know, there is two short ones, fifty mil long. Four long ones, they are 75 mil long. There are stainless steel washers that go in between, nylock bolts. So nylock, so they don't unwind. So basically, as you open and close the chair, these won't unwind. They don't drop on the full floor and fall apart in the grass. So that's your bulk of pack. From memory now, I need one leg. Which way round it goes? Does it make a difference? Yes, it does. The curve has to come down towards the front. I think you can see that there. So you get your curve here. Top of the curve, back there. Bolt goes through. No washer. One washer goes on. All the way through into the frame. We want a washer and a nylock. Reach to the back of the bench. We have a big screwdriver and stretch it to fit on there. So if I can find that. Just do those up. Takes a little bit of effort because you've got that nylock. Don't think you've done it up until it pulls together. So this feels tight at the moment on pressure. But I've got still got a bit of work to do. So getting back in there. Nice big dome heads on these, nice and decorative. That's better. If anything, half a turn too tight. Bit the button over. So it moves. First one done. Back of the chair. Go in. Lift up. Drop down. We need our arm. Let's go in here. Long bolt drops through the arm. One washer in between. Due effect of how the bolts are, you don't really need a washer out on this outside because you've got such a nice big head surface on there. So don't go putting an extra washer in. A washer there, going to feed through. Come round the back here. The bolt comes through the back there. Do that one up. Finger tight. Do them up. Again, same principle. That's it. Off of there. So we're starting to get somewhere now. We then want our bracket. Now, before we fit our bracket up onto there, I'm going to drill four holes. Again, I can go back to try and see where we are. Maybe there. Turn around. 
These are in underneath. Something as a spacer, I'm just using a piece of timber there. So I got my full. You can drill those out. Now I've got that blocking underneath. Lift it up off the bench into there. These are so we can fix this to the underside of the arm. Da. Do you see those? Do you want me to? Okay, quite good. Right. So we've got four little holes. All right. I'm going to come right down to here then. Just in here. That's the bolt hole. So these are in the top. They're coming up through. All right. Fantastic. Thanks, Craig. So you want a long bolt. No, wrong one, short one. 50 mil. All right, Colin. Uh, go on them. Um, just a few questions. Um, everybody wants to know who's having my chair. Who's having the chair? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, and the screwdriver that you use, is that available in the Axminster catalog? It's, it's not. Um, the, the boys in here, all right. This is an old traditional carpenter screwdriver. I don't know who R.A. was. Um, it came in for a thing to go up to Tools for Africa many years ago, and missed the deadline. The guy actually who was collecting the tools actually lives in town and refused to come and get them. And ever since then, I've kept it in here. I love it. Kind of, I wish we, you know, maybe, maybe one day we'll start making some. There you go. Product development idea. All right. Colin, right. Um, and just one more thing from Maria. She wants to say how much she loves the design of the chair. I think it's fantastic. I wish we'd designed it. But I, the thing I really love about the design of this, which we'll show you with the one on the floor in a minute, is it folds up, which is the thing really we covered when we first started. So, okay, we're going back to putting our, our bracket on our arm. So we've got the bracket. The bolt goes through, which is short one. One washer. Going to grab a washer and a nut. Can lift the arm up. I'm going to bear that on there. I've got the washer inside now. Spect. Bear with me. I'm trying not to wallop the camera. Hold that one over. That's better. So we can see the nut. I'm going to put on there. But I've gone the wrong way around. Look. So simple to do. Craig's just winking at me now. I'm going, yeah, going wrong at you. So bolt head there. Why that way? Because this is flush on the inside of the chair. You're not going to catch your clothes on it or anything. Washer. Bracket, washer. What I was really looking at, it was just easier to do it the other way around, actually. But do that up. We can do the same again. Getting under there. Try it about. Fold that over because, and it's going to be a bit tricky because we've only got our three legs. What stainless steel boxes or screws were for? So, in here, and I'm hoping I think Craig can probably get the camera angle nicely on there. I set this up on the bench. We have Bottom leg, at the moment, is suggesting we could come back a bit there. So I can play around with the positions to get those surfaces, as in leg and leg on the floor. All right? That's quite important. Next thing I do, having got the other side on, put it on the floor. We're going to do that, I think, Craig, with this. Because one of the things I know with these, when I put them together, Need to check that this folds in. All right, can you see that? Hopefully you can see that. Let's just see if I can lift that up. That's better. So that drops down through the arm. That's better. All right. Now, if it doesn't go through, you might have to take a small bit off the inside of the arms just to adjust it. Nothing drastic. It's not that difficult to do. I've actually looked at Veritas' instructions, and they actually have it. So the top comes this way when you fold it up 
which bear with me. So it does that. Opposite way of what I'd have it. The problem with it, my one I have at home, I stand up like that. So I don't want to damage the top by having it on the floor. So you might need to do that small bit of adjustment. Just going to drop him back down. Then we're going to ask Calvin what he's got. What have you got, mate? Go on. Um, so Frederick was just asking, are the nuts nylock? The nuts have a nylock fitting. So yes, they are nylon inside, right? So they, it stops them from winding, slipping off. And I don't know about you guys, but there's nothing worse than having this out in the chair, having it out in the garden. You fold it up. You carry it back. You put it wherever you're storing it, which we're going to cover in a second. And then you find out one of the nuts has fallen off in amongst the grass somewhere. That then goes back to the lawnmower blade sharpening session we did four months ago. All right? We don't really want to go. So, but you can see how this folds up. So on the one we got up the bench, we've got it clamped on. Get it. Once you're happy with position, I'd screw this in. You can check your measurement opening width-wise, where things are. It's quite easy to measure. You've got a width of your seat. You've got your legs. You can work out where things look parallel. Clamp them on. Test how it folds up. Next important bit, and someone asked us about this last week on one of the sessions. You need to finish it. Now, that's not as, as a finished project, sit on the bench, get it ready. You need to do something to protect it. You're going to put it outside. You spend a lot of time making this. So we do different things, um, the different finishes. Think of something or look for something which I would class as a garden furniture type oil, an exterior oil. Don't go using a varnish. Your varnish is a surface treatment. It sits on the surface. If you chip it, water will get in underneath it. Then it starts to peel off. An oil actually sinks into the wood, creates a barrier. It might need a couple of coats. So I know the things we did the other week, things like the arms, we actually had. Let's see if I can find my brackets. Look. Craig, gone back to. So we made up. I'll put this on the camera for you a minute. It's a couple of little hooks. So Craig um, cut up a coat hook the other week. We hung these up so we could paint them with the oil. So before you go putting your chair totally together and say, there, that's it, put it together, check how it all fits, make any small alterations, clean it up. So get your sander out. So I've sanded the arm since last week. Then put some finish on it. Preserve it. Help look after it. Last bit, a few of you might not like. My wife hates at home. I will say, when you finish sitting in it, if it's gonna if it's gonna rain, can can you pack it up and put it inside or try and look after it? You spent a lot of time, hopefully, some of you making these. So I said you about a little hook. Let's have a look on camera too, Craig, just to give the guys an idea what you made for you. So these were done just so we could hang it up. We hang this up on one of the clamps so we could paint them, so just suspend them. Real easy thing to do, just to get that, that finish on there, make it look presentable. Now, well, Cohen, how are we doing? I know we're not going to get loads and loads of questions. I've ever explained it too much, or no one wants to make a chair now. Oh, hoping you've enjoyed this. It's been a big project for us, a five-week thing, and we've never, we've never made anything this big with you, have we? You know? So quite nice to do. It's quite a challenge as well. They're fantastic. Maria, you summed up beautifully. They're, they're great to sit in because they're comfortable, easy. They fold up. They're nice to store. I love the design of this. It's one of the reasons when, and this was a suggestion from one of you. So, again, if you've got those sort of ideas and comments, let's have them. This was a suggestion from one of you as the viewers. What can you make? Could you make a chip? Yeah, okay, we'll do it. And I can remember when we this came in going, oh, God, it's five weeks of, but we've done five weeks. Try and make up something a bit bigger for you. Quite an enjoyable project. I don't know who's getting the chair. If you like this, give us the thumbs up. These two are already Colwyn sitting here smiling because she thinks he's getting it. Craig, go and point him to himself. Lily's already said she wants it for a gin and tonic platform in the garden. I don't know. Tom Galvin's got claims to it. it, it it's getting out of hand, this, okay? Um, but if you want to factory produce these, let us know. I've got a, a, a customer waiting list for you. If you've liked it, click that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You get to see what we do tomorrow as well, then. Share it with your friends. Be fantastic. Thank you for joining us. And I'm hoping I haven't bored you all to death with five weeks of making your garden furniture. We will see you tomorrow. Another woodworking wisdom. Goodbye. <laughs>